Exclusive Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Frau, and with us again, a very special guest for this week. We have Maggie Miggins of the Maggie Miggins Group. Maggie is so many things to so many people. Uh, she's a Compass real estate agent and broker, and she services the Essex Union in Morris County in New Jersey. She owns the Maggie Miggins Group. As a real estate broker, she's sold over $750 million in luxury real estate. She's been named to the Wall Street Journal Real Trends as a top 1,000 broker throughout the United States. She's had years of luxury real estate experiences and has committed herself to improving her town by being on so many boards and committees. She's also sought after a real estate speaker. And she was recently elected Milburn, New Jersey mayor. Wow, I, my brain was like getting crossed up even reading your bio because it's so much. We have so much to talk about. I'm so excited to have you on. Thank you so much. Maggie, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Michael. It's my pleasure. Okay, so wow. Um, I, I have had political figures on the podcast before, but no no one who has kind of the resume of you and to the where you you're a real estate agent at the same time and broker who's done this, just like all the real estate agents who are gonna listen. So I guess my first question to you is, uh, how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> well, um, busy. I mean, yeah, I would say. you know, first and foremost, um, we have, um, you know, I have a great real estate team that works with me. I've been selling real estate for 27 years. So I do have a great team and we are, we're closing up on uh, close to a billion dollars worth of real estate, believe it or not. And, um, it's it's who you surround yourself with. You you know no one succeeds alone ever. So you just want to make sure you have the right people on your team at all times. And I do. I'm blessed. I have great people in admin. I have fabulous salespeople. We don't have any prima donnas here. They're just not allowed. Um, and we have we have our own. I have my own office. I'm sitting in my office right now. We have our own office, which is right across from our train station in Short Hills. At 30 minutes into New York City. It's a beautiful, leafy suburb. Everyone loves to come here. So my business is very, very important to me. But also giving back is important to me. And so once my children were raised, I got the opportunity to then, I've always loved politics, um, but I got the opportunity to spend time within it. So I ran for our township committee um, and was successful. And then in our form of government in Milburn, uh, the township committee chooses the mayor. That's how that works. So it's a little different. You have, you know, you run the meeting, you've got a couple little extra perks here, but it's your, your, the five members of our committee all have equal votes as it were. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I usually, we usually get into a lot of real estate stuff sure. in this podcast. Sure. But I, the, I was writing, like trying to think about how I wanted to structure this podcast. And I just kept thinking, I'm like, oh my gosh, she was already successful in real estate. So people knew her, liked her, trusted her. She's been a mega agent for so long. And now she's the mayor. Number one, how does anybody even compete with that? Like if they go on a listing presentation with you, like how does that even work? Literally, like you're the mayor of the town now. <laughs> so like, is that, how has that been? Or is it kind of still new in that transition? Well, first of all, I think it's new. But secondly, um, you know, half the people might not like me. <laughs> I mean, we, we're partisan, well, maybe, maybe. We're partisan <laughs> here. So half the people might not like me. Um, I'm very moderate though. I'm. I, probably one of the most moderate people you will ever meet. I am definitely very moderate. So um, I don't think of it as competition. You know, listen, people can use it against us. Oh, how is she going to have time to sell your house? She's the mayor. She's running the town, which I'm not, by the way. We have an amazing set of professionals that run our town, that do the yeoman's job for us. And we're more like the board overseeing everything, yes? I mean, we're very involved. I mean, there are certain committees that I'm very passionate about, whether it's the his, the Milburn Short Hills Historical Society or the Historic Preservation Committee. Those are very important uh, uh, places that I like to spend my time. Um, but I don't think, I think people buy people before they buy products and services. They really do. So if somebody connects with me, then, then it's a beautiful thing. Um, so I don't think my mayoral duties... I mean, I have more name recognition, which is good because you always want to have right. that name recognition. Right. Right. Um, right. You always want to be number one or two in a person's mind when they're thinking real estate. So that's a benefit. 
Um, I guess we'll know, you know, at the end of the year, we'll come back on and we'll decide, was it a, a helpful or harmful? But at yeah, the end exactly. of the day, it's about giving back. And I'm very much about giving back. Um, this town has been so very good to the Miggins family and to myself personally, that I feel it, it's time that I give back something to them. You know, the law you of reciprocity. I mean, from the fact that you've been on a bajillion boards, been involved in the town, gave back, community service, and then on boards and legislation for the Board of Realtors and Very important. everything that you've done, you've been involved. Have you always been like that? I would picture you like class president and leading. Like, has that always just been something that you've been involved in? Um, I, you know, back in the day in high school, yes, I, I was um, in leadership positions. Um, I guess I just gravitate towards it. I really do like it. I like policy. Um, I like to, um, like I said, I like to help people and I like to help a cause as it were. So yes, I, I, I have been, but I'm more, um, I'm not shy. Um, I also, uh, bend towards, uh, I sing. So I like to do that as well. So yes to, oh, wow. yes to politics, yes to singing, but always giving right. back. You know, I come from a big Irish Catholic family and that's what you did. Everybody worked together. You just sing and make policy and sell a billion dollars. That's right. People don't know I sing them. <laughs> oh, well, now they do. Now they do. So now, now they do. Part of the, now the part of the deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how, how do you do it? Like, okay. So being a successful realtor selling almost a billion dollars in real estate, that's one thing. Being a successful, a successful politician or a town board member at your level or having such responsibility is one thing. How are you able to, and you kind of mentioned this about delegating, having a really good team, making sure you have people in place to do a lot of things, but it might be too early on, but how, how do you manage all of that? You must have a super tight knit schedule. I absolutely have a very tight schedule. And my, um, Caroline, who is, uh, gosh, she runs this office. She and I have been friends for 25 years. She really helps me, whether it's a constituent that wants, wishes to meet with me. Um, she's setting those appointments up for me. Time block. You know, if there's one thing I learned, it's about time blocking. You, and what you erase, you must replace. So if I'm supposed to work out today, this morning, between 7 and 8, but I had an emergency call, well, then I take that emergency call, but then I have to replace that workout because that's, you know, that's very important to me as well. So I think when you time block, whether you're time blocking to do lead generation, which we have to do, write contracts, uh, meet with clients, you have to time block. You really have to time block. Um, and so that I do, that I do. I have a calendar and I time block. And in fact, I was just, um, we were having a mayor's uh, in the local area that five or six of us are meeting. Um, unfortunately, we're having some car theft issues in our different towns. So we wanna meet together. We all want to meet together. So I just sat for five seconds before we got on our call and said to Caroline, here's the time, here are the times that are available. Am I available or aren't I? So that I could quick get that out. You know, you want to get it right out. So that's really important is the time blocking. And you have to make sure the, the business got me here, but the business still, it's not just about me. I, you know, I have a lot of people that work for me. So it's very important that I continue the process of getting listings, getting buyers, doing business, paying salaries, that's all very important. I'll let, you know, no one succeeds alone. And and I need I, I really need these people around me. They make me look good. They make me look good. So you're 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 making policies, having meetings, working with buyers, working with sellers. Are, there has to be something in there you've kind of you I'm gonna guess you've built up enough of a structure of a team where you're not the one taking out buyers. Yeah, so that's that. that's really that's true. It's um I it's a rare day I do take out buyers. Um what I love, what oh thrills me beyond measure, is today um, the buyers that are coming back grew up here, and they want to raise their children here because they had wonderful experiences growing up in Milburn and Short Hills. And um, so I'll take those buyers out, like old old clients or their children. Yes, absolutely. If somebody's coming in to you know we have a listing and somebody comes in off that listing and they want to start working with us. Then I have agents that I, I, I have the agents. Our agents are very talented and our agents yeah. will take them out. I focus more on the listings. Right. I mean, it's, it's a little less of the time consuming going through the, some of the showings and having to set all that stuff up and you well, can kind of deal with it. 
The yes and no. I mean, it's a different strategy, right? Listings are always a different strategy than buyers. And a lot of our high-end homes that are my listings, I accompany the showings anyway, because I think that's important. And um, so you do, you know, in a sense, you are working with someone's buyer when you're showing your listings. But yes, it's rare. If I have buyers that come in, you know, with a million dollar listing or a million and a half dollar, you know, my, again, everybody needs to eat. Everybody has to eat, right? So we have to feed everyone, make sure everyone's getting it. I'm going to put you on the hot seat with this one. Answer it if you want. I shall. <laughs> phone call comes in. Yep. At the same time, another phone call comes in. Yes. One's a client. One's a what? One's, one's a client. Yep. Pressing issue. Yes. Town business. Pressing issue. Which one goes to Caroline and which one goes to you? Like, how do you do that? How do you work? How do you work that? So I haven't, ex- that's a really great question. I haven't experienced that yet. Um, That's a really great question. I guess it would depend upon the severity of the pressing issue for the town. Um, you could always go town landline client cell phone. Well, like, you know yeah. what? If 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 uh, you know, and you don't wish it, but if there's you know something major happening, catastrophic. Well, first of all. If something major and catastrophic is happening in our town, we've got the best people in charge. Our fire chief, our police chief, our our, uh, EMS, which is volunteer, and they're absolutely amazing. Our business administrator. um, These are the people that handle this day in, day out. So a client, you know, and usually, I have to tell you something, 90% of the client uh, first of all, a client should never call you. You should never, you should have that relationship where you're calling the client. This is what the, a client should never be calling you. But if perchance it's something, normally 90% of the stuff is um, stuff that can be handled by staff, normally. But they don't necessarily know that. Maggie, do I have to put the paint cans out today or tomorrow? Like that's the kind of stuff a, 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 an agent can handle or, or my staff can handle. But it's something in terms of negotiation or home inspection issues or cross, you know, my job is to cross over the finish line. Let's get us across the finish line. Let's score the goal. Let's get across the finish line. So that's my job. So normally, um, and sometimes, you know, depending upon who they're working with on the team, I, I might call them and say, hey, how's everything going? Great. We've been in touch with Carol. You, yeah, she's fabulous. Do you know she's fabulous? I'm like, I know she's fabulous. Like they don't need to talk. I know she's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, they're like, they don't need you. You're good. You got it done. It's like yeah. dating. Yeah. You know, it is yes. dating. In the beginning, it's hot and heavy. You're looking at the phone. Did they call you? Aren't they calling you? What's going on? And then all of a sudden you get the transaction rolling. It's still important that you talk to the client at least once or twice a week. But once the tra- there's somebody takes over the next piece of the transaction and then the next piece, you just want to keep touching base to say, hey, What's going on? I'm here. Type of yeah. I have a director of operations and we always ask for Zillow reviews. Yes. We average around a hundred homes sold, something like that a year. And uh, my reviews come in and always be like, well, you know, Mike was excellent to work with, but Jess, the director of operations, but like, wait, 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 wait. She gets all the love. That's a- and I, listen, I, I try to provide a huge customer service, but if you've hired the right people and you have the right people in place, they're, you know, when you're dealing with multiple clients, we don't ever want things to fall through the cracks. You want them to feel like you're there the entire way. So having a good staff is so. 100%. Some things I'll do, you know, and my staff does know to say, there's no, you know, again, if I'm talking to my clients twice a week or so, Sometimes it could be daily. It just depends upon where we're at in that relationship, in this business relationship. But, you know, one tip is always, and I had a business coach teach me this. If Caroline's calling one of my clients or Allie or Leslie or whoever it is, Maggie asked me to call you. Maggie asked me to call you. They're an extension of me. So that's important. If anybody can learn anything, that's it. Yep. Um, I think it is so cool and I don't understand we don't have more of this, of real estate brokers or agents getting into the town leadership positions 
we know so much on infrastructure. We know so much on the schools. We know so much on tax. We know so much on property values, which really, you know, you want to have a great town. You have a great school system. You want to have great tax structure, great infrastructure, and great property values. It means that you've done a lot of really good things with your town. And do you, do you think, and I think it's so cool that you have this position because you are well-spoken. You are you. very charismatic. You can get your point across and communicate well. And you have years of leadership and commitment to community service. Do you think more real estate agents who actually care and not just in it for the power and the fame where people know you or sell more real estate from it, do you, do you think that people, more real estate brokers should get involved? I do. I think everyone should, some, you know, if they're comfortable with it, absolutely start out on a board. Um, you know, some of the most powerful boards are your planning board and your zoning board. Uh, and oh, yes. because they decide, yeah. right, what the future holds. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I promise you, I didn't do it for power. I didn't do it. This is a volunteer. You know, I mean, I think oh, you're a tracker, you're, you're stipend. Community service. Yeah, it's right. community service for me. Um, I, my feeling on the matter is we are here for such a short time, right? We're just specs. So we're just borrowing what we have, whether it's the home we live in or the towns that we live in. Um, so my whole, um, what really gets me excited is preservation. That's really important to me. And, and the older I get, the more I see how important it is that we preserve whatever, if it's a historic uh, building or historic homes for the next generations and the next generations and the next generations. You still have to have change. Change is good, but not to tear down and rip everything apart. That's really what got me very excited about it and being very important that we make sure we mark our treasures um, in the town. That, that really excites me. So just because we're only here for this long, so it's important that we do what we can to preserve what we have. That's, that's, yeah. that's really important to me. So I do, if somebody could get involved and, you know, even on start a little bit, it's difficult. I, my children are older. So when they were younger, I would have never been able to do that. I mean, I did do what they call district leader. Those are like boots on the ground. Those are the people that pick the candidates that are going to run. Right. Right. Um, and I could do that because there wasn't as much of a time commitment. So my commitment was to my children and my, yeah. and to my husband. And still is really, believe it or not. Um, and now that um, everybody's older and they're all at, I mean, I have a 33 year old and a 28 year old and they are out of the house and doing very well. They're off the payroll, knock wood. Good, there you go. Um, yeah. So I could then commit the time to trying to make this town a better place. So that's why I did. Gotcha. What would you say is the biggest similarity and differences between being somebody so experienced in real estate and now in your new role? Well, I never like to look like a fool. That's really important to me. Yeah. So research is the breakfast of champions and I do a lot of it. So I'm learning so much. And if I don't know, I'm not afraid to say, oh gosh, I don't have the answer to that question. Can I get back to you? I do it in real estate. You know, that's easy enough to say, you know, Mr. Seller, that's a really great question. And I'm going to get back to you on that. Cause I, I don't want to, we don't, we always think we have to have all the answers. We don't. We don't, we, you know, we just don't, we, we have our specialties. So it could be something um, that I might not have the answer to that I'll go and find, I'll research it. And so I do a lot of reading, a lot of newspaper reading, a lot of research. If something's important to me, I make sure I can gather all the information I possibly can and um, be able to then process it and then give it to somebody else, especially if it's something I'm passionate about. Gotcha. And, and your new role, obviously as a real estate, salesperson, you've had an excellent year. We've all kind of lived through a really boom in real estate property values go up. We all do really, really well. Um, and, but on the, pol the political side of it, where you're running, you know, the town government, what specifically are you looking at within, within the counties that you serve and the town that you serve? And what is it specifically that you think, Hey, this is a really important thing that I want to leave a legacy that I came in, I fixed, I made better. I'm going to put some time and commitment into getting this thing worked on. Like, do anything specific? It is. It for me, it'll be centered around the historic. Um, we have some historic churches and Parsons houses, homes that are haven't been designated historic, and that's concerning to me. 
we just had two buildings that because this area had not been designated historic and although they yeah. um they said oh well those buildings weren't historic well they were they had been right. moved so they had been moved from one original place to a different original place to the newer yeah. place and then they were torn down oh that crushes me now i understand we have to you know life keeps moving forward and we need to life is about change and you know if you don't adapt you die change or die they say but that was a little uh disconcerting to me so what i'd really love to see is a few more of these um buildings mm -hmm. and areas protected we have two areas in town in milburn we have one section uh the wyoming section that has been designated historic and then we have the short hills historic park and what that what does that mean that means that you can't tear the houses down we, our town was founded by a gentleman. In fact, we were just on Jeopardy. They had the facts wrong. But uh, name a town, uh, you know, a wealthy, affluent town in New Jersey. And they talked about Stuart Hartshorn, who was the founder of our town. And it was the roller shade. He created this roller shade. Well, they had a little bit of their facts wrong. But we were, we were there. He created our community um, back in the day, uh, in the 1800s. And so we have some beautiful historic homes that of course are now, they're, they're, they can never get torn down. In fact, we have a municipal land use, the Historic Preservation Committee. You have to go in front of them anytime you, anytime you wanna do any work on your house. And so um, I think that's important. So there's a few more properties I'd like to see. We, I was successful this year in bringing um, uh, three properties. Uh, we created them, made them historic. One is a, well, one's a cemetery. Uh, one is a parcel house and one was a Hessian house where Hessian soldiers from the Revolutionary War hid in wow. this house. So we, I was thrilled about that. So there's, some, there's a few more that we'd like to make sure that get protected and preserved. Well, that's a passion of yours. Very much so. Very much so. I think, so. I think it's important. Here. And people like that. You know, people love, we have a little downtown. We've got some old historic buildings down there. Le like. The young kids today are coming and wanting that. There's, you know, I've been reading these articles about kids wanting to, you know, you look in these towns and they want that. They want that cute little downtown area. They don't want these strip malls. They want sweet and cute and older. So I, that's, yes, I'm working hard for that. That's, that's a big passion. I come from a little town in upstate New York, New Paltz, where um, we had French settlers called the Huguenots. And we have one of the oldest streets in North America. 1729 or something like that and we and it's a small little town that's where i'm from and we would always drive by it and they had the little house with the little gun holes with, you know where they used to stick the musket out to the bottom and it like now they've walled it all off all historical so i i grew up in a town that was very much try to keep its small town vibe and try to keep the historical nature of everything and so it's so I can appreciate that mm -hmm. i yeah, agree with you sure. I agree. in fact um uh, the church I go to, St. Rose of Lima, right here in Short Hills. Well, we were the Battle of Springfield, right, during the uh, Revolutionary War. And they were digging out. We put in an elevator. And as they're digging out, they're finding um, cannibals from the Revolutionary War. It was very cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is I cool. know. So that right that's there. Cool. Little, town, little time capsules right there for you. Correct. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, let's talk, let's just dive in a little bit of real estate. Sure. So we kind of touched on it. Um, are you kind of seeing the same trends that everybody else is property values rising, uh, no inventory, that sort of thing. Just everybody's crushing it and everybody wants to be a real estate agent now. Everything's kind of looking great. Well, and that's a really important number to watch, right? As the number of agents go up, you you know, there there crosses an axis where as they go up and the tra the transactions go down, the, the crush is coming. The, it's coming. I I know it is. You there, you know, there are how many realtors now in our country? Is it, are we up to one point eight million or something? I think back in two thousand and five, we got as low as like or two thousand and eight, seven hundred eighty three thousand somewhere along there. Everybody thinks it's easy to sell real estate, everybody. And it's tough, you know, you, you've, we normally end in the town, I'm in Milburn Short Hills, and we're the township of Milburn, Short Hills is like the tonier section of it, this 07078 zip code, after the average price is much higher in Short Hills than it is Milburn, but it's all the same town. So we normally end our, our year with like 65 to 75 homes on average at the end of December. This December we had nine, nine. 
and there is just not enough houses to sell. So what worries me about that is like we put a house out, it had 16 offers on it. We'll put another house out. We have something coming up just around a million dollars. It'll probably sell for a million too. Uh, it'll probably have 15, 16 offers on it. Uh, it's not sustainable. The, the, you know, we, we tracked um, business from like 2000, between 2000 and 2008, was it? Or 2006, prices had gone up about 115% in that time frame. And then between 2007 and 2012, we went down 22%. But if you bought at the height at the end of 2006, and you had to, you were relocated and had to sell in 2012, you lost about 30% of your value. Your million dollar house was now 700,000. So, and it took 13 years to recover. So that's the kind of stuff that does, does worry me. I mean, I see interest rates going up. What's different with this market that was, is different now than it was say back in the go-go days of 2005, five and six up in that time. Uh, inflation, we didn't have inflation then. I mean, now it's really rearing its ugly head. So we do see the Fed raising rates uh, we will see a lot of inventory come on. I'm always curious as to what happens in the first month of the year. We, in January and February, we're we're the type of community that is uh, Wall Street, right? We have a lot of Wall Street guys here and ladies, so that it's all bonus predicated on their bonuses. So we see a lot of people shopping now. Yep. I have a three and a half million dollar home. I showed it twice two days ago. I mean, I'm showing it. You know, it's getting a lot of showings, a lot of activity on it, and. Um, we, so what we're just trying to do is get the listings. I mean, I am on the phone with people every day saying, I can get you this today. I cannot, tomorrow's never promised. And you, I don't know what could happen tomorrow, but I know this is not sustainable. So if you were ever thinking about moving, now's the time to do it. If you were a seller, now's the time. And if you're a buyer, I'll say to buyers, listen, you're just married, you've got, one two-year-old, another one's on the way. You're here for a good 20 years. It doesn't matter what you pay today. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. If you're not going to move for 20 years, who cares? You get the best school district, 15 minutes to an international airport, 30 minutes to Gotham, right on the train. Boom, I, you probably can't see it or maybe you could hear it, but the train goes by all day long, right? Direct into New York City. There, we have beautiful reservations, a beautiful place to raise your family. It really is. I'm telling you, the kids are coming back that grew up here. That just thrills me. You, but it's so you, tough. There's no foresee, inventory. It's difficult. Yeah. Do you foresee, do you foresee, and everybody, I guess people who are not in real estate, this happens more. People look at real estate like, well, I'll just wait for it to come down like tomorrow. Well, that's, that's not how it works. You don't understand the fundamentals of how this whole thing works. But where do you foresee this real estate market going? Do you see... Uh, a plateauing, continue to rise, or kind of a slight decline for a little while? Where, where do you think? My crystal think? ball, always cloudy. Um, my crystal ball says this is going to be a pretty good year. It's not going to be as good as that first year out uh, of COVID, right? That was bedlam. That was but life is also changing, yes? I mean, um, I can tell you this because I was on that committee. We normally sell in Milburn Short Hills 1,200 uh, parking permits because we have our own parking for our people that live in town. We, we own our own parking deck, we own our own parking lots, which is great so that if you live in town, you can buy a parking permit. It's about $620 for the year. So we had built a deck and we funded the deck through the revenue from the permits. Then COVID hit. We normally sell 1,200 permits. COVID hit 120. 120. Wow. So now we're starting to see people are coming back in again. People are yeah. starting to go into the city. We're starting to see, you know, so our parking permits are up. They aren't at 1,200, but they are going up. It'll be interesting for me to see what happens over the next few years in terms of um, are the companies going to require you to come back in five days a week or aren't they going to require you to do it five days? You know, we don't know. I guess it depends upon what sector you're in. Right. My 28 year old can work from home. Um, her boyfriend goes into work uh, a couple days a week. The, my 33 year old, he's in the office every day. He's out in San Diego. He's in the office every day. So, so you think that will be pretty healthy for the next couple of years? And this kind of I don't say the next few years. I think this will be a good year. 
I think what we have to watch, it's all about supply and demand. And I think what we have to do is watch the inventory, watch the uh, rate of absorption, watch the price reductions, watch the um, under contracts and how long that's taking. I think if you start to see inventory building and not getting absorbed, well, keep an eye on that. And you'll see interest rates. You know, I have to say something. A lot of these towns that we sell in, it's the 1%. And so they're not, of course, everybody loves to lock into a great interest rate. But a lot of the people in our area, the interest rate doesn't really matter to them. It does and it doesn't. You know, it's not at the point, if the interest rates go up a point, it's not going to stop them from being able to afford to buy a house. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I think it's an interesting time because we have, it's almost like as we're watching this kind of unfold, we have these bubbles of things that are happening, supply chain issues, uh, inven- lack of inventory, um, building products, materials, uh, no new construction, fires piling up, interest rates. So it's interesting because I think what's happening is because we have this across the board nationwide issue thing happening, that it's really a government thing that they're controlling through the Fed and the interest rates to see, okay, well, we know we got to raise interest rates here, but let's see how long we could, how we can incrementally do this without destroying everything. Well, it's, it is a balancing act. Yeah. It is. Yeah. What worries me more, I'll tell you what really worries me. Um, uh, the way to build wealth is through home ownership. And what worries me is that so many of these hedge funds now and uh, are buying up real estate. I think, I think I read something about one out of every six homes is going to an investor. And that worries me because, you know, we don't have, you know, um, laws on the books that could stop somebody. I mean, I, I think I read Blackstone is buying up, you know, thousands upon thousands of homes and, What's to stop them from jacking up rents or it, it, I'm more, I, that kind of stuff worries me is that, that the home ownership and who's controlling the homes that worries me more. And I, and I, I think everybody, everybody deserves to own a home. I do believe that. I think, um, uh, it worries me that these companies come in and start buying them up and, uh, and, and we don't have any control and it's, you know, it's Americana, right? Apple pie, hot dogs, owning a home, dog in the yard. Raise your family there. So I wanna, that I'd really like to keep an eye on, people getting um, squeezed out of being able to buy a home. Well, if you think about it, the American home becomes an asset that's unattainable by most Americans. The, the government or who, however this is going to work is going to only have two options. Either they're basically going to come up with different kind of mortgage incentives or they're going to continue to print a lot of money to make that asset more attainable. But then it you just there you go on inflation like you, i think that we're creating an issue that we don't know how to get out of and that will become an issue that you'll see for the next 10 20 years like think about it if a single family home right now went from two hundred fifty thousand dollars to buy up you know to a three bedroom in a regular town but now it's a half a million dollars you can't afford that mortgage the, the person who's going to be able to try to afford that working the jobs that pay salaries for teachers you know you just can't. Like I talked to my wife the other day and I was like, man, can you imagine if this house, what it's worth now that we live in is what we tried to buy on when I was a teacher and my wife's still a teacher. We couldn't live there. That's right. How, how can we afford that? It's not, it's not possible. Even if you made $6,000 a, a month, yeah, it's still between bills and mortgages and, and daycare and everything. Like, how do you afford that? It's just difficult. making ends meet. It is. And so Crazy. that, that's, that's, that that's worries me. Town. Yeah. The way to, the way to, for wealth building. I, I do, if you can buy a house, I say buy a house. In fact, my daughter, right at, she went to Notre Dame, she graduated, first job was with Deloitte in Chicago. She bought a condo. Yep. She still owns it. Somebody's paying her rent and uh, she's building her wealth that way. I think, you know, in her 20s, I said, good for you, Lizzie Miggins. That's the way to go. Um, it's important. You, you, I, that does work. So for me, home ownership is so important for everyone, for everyone. Right. A way to build wealth. It is a way to build wealth. For sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is your mayor. We're all our mayors. Maggie Miggins, thank you so much for being on with us. Maggie, where can they, um, where can the people listening find more about you and contact you and get all of Oh, them? 
It would be my pleasure. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to call me. Um, 973-376-8990. That's our office line. And then if you want to email me, probably Gmail is going to be the easiest, eh? But I spell my name M-A, G's and George, G's and George, E is an elephant, E is an elephant. I spell Maggie differently. Most people think it's I-E, but it's E-E for me, Maggie. And then my last name is Miggins, M I G's and George, G's and George, I-N-S at Gmail. Maggie we'll put, Miggins at Gmail. We'll put all that in, we'll put all that in the description. If, if they have real estate related questions, uh, which website? MigginsRealEstate.com. MigginsRealEstate.com. They can Google Google me, and they'll, and they'll yeah, be able yeah. to come up with it. Maggie Megans, yeah. Maggie, thank you so much for being here. Michael, it was a such a Thank you for doing this. Thank you so very much. It was my pleasure, too. <laughs>